Moto has a very powerful painting and baking tool set, both of which can be leveraged for 2D concepting inside of Moto. Uh, Moto in itself is kind of an amazing 3D concepting tool, but it's one thing that a lot of people don't know is that you can use our painting tools to concept in 2D, in, in 3D space in 2D um, with your actual objects as scale reference. And I think that's kind of cool. So first off, what we want to do is come to the Necrolite weapon.blx file, select the sickle model, press control C in polygon mode, file and new to create a new scene. And that will create a new scene untitled with a mesh layer and it's empty. Click on that, name it sickle. Press Control V to paste our sickle into that layer. And now let's go ahead and toggle off the visibility of all those secondary scenes that we previously had visible. With your item selected, come in, in component mode, polygon component mode in this case, edit, center selected, along all, and that will center our object. And if you notice in item mode, we are still at the origin because of a new fresh mesh layer, and we moved the polys, so not the item. All right, so in polygon mode, Press the W key for the move tool. Move it up and over just so it sits right on top of our origin. Kind of just hovers over. Press the space bar to drop your tool. Add item, mesh item. And now we have a new mesh layer that we can go ahead and come over to the cube tool. Click on that. Left click and drag out to create a plane. And set the position along Z to zero so it's nice and centered. And 2.5 meters in both directions. So we have a perfect cube. All right, now come over to the shading tab, click on render. Also real quick, toggle your material off and on so you get your texture back. And that's just an OpenGL thing. Um, but click on render, come over to um, properties and change your frame width and height underneath frame to 1024 by 1024. And that way when we bake, it'll bake to the correct size and scale. All right, so come back to lists, double click on your UV map here underneath lists, UV maps, and you should have had a, a UV map automatically created. If so, um, inside this window, press the R key for the scale tool and you see scale U and V. Click on the gang edit related controls here. So you have equal sign and 99%. It'll make both channels 99% for U and V, just pulling that in a little bit. Um, so we have bake border uh, like a big border bleed, essentially. All right, so we have this polygon item, our mesh item, let's name that painter plane. And in the shader tree, press M and name that paint. And let's go ahead, select that material, bake from object to render outputs and set a distance of 80 millimeters. This is the distance for which that plane is going to kind of fire rays to try and capture this object that you see here, you'll notice that I have the sickle in this image. I'm just gonna save this image out to my desktop as a final color image, already done so. And I can reload that, add layer image map, load image, and I will come right on down to my final color image that I already created, turn off my sickle object, and you can see that now I have this image map that is part of my material I can see in 3D. Now I can add a layer, image map, new image, create a new image, we'll name that paint two, and start painting on top of that. Just set the resolution at 1024, and come over to the paint tab, where you can see everything's much brighter. It's actually, OpenGL is more well-engineered for sculpting and painting in particular. Come over to paint tools, paint brush, tool properties down here and set your foreground color to like a blue or something like that. You know, I'm kind of thinking that's a nice color to uh, concept. And just zoom in and on that new layer, start painting away on top using your two scale background reference image at scale. So there we go. Use the erase tool to just kind of get, you know, slowly start refining images coming up with rough generic shapes and forms because once again, you know, the whole idea with kind of silhouettes is just being able to quickly come up with ideas and see how it reads as a simple form or object. Add a layer, image map, new image. Say if I want to have a separate image for a blade and um, I will come back to the paintbrush, change the foreground color to black and just start painting in place where the blade is. Have the erase tool, 
start just coming up with general forms and shapes. And if I want to say, for instance, um, make this fall behind, just drop that back behind. It's a layered system, just like you're, uh, you would be used to. And I can even change the opacity. Or for instance, take my final color, drop that on top, and change the opacity there. So I constantly have my reference image there while I'm painting. It's kind of up to you. Now, here's a couple other examples of this process. First off, um, this weapon itself, the process I went through as far as um, concepting with it. Here's a layer in my shader tree that I have different groups inside for concept one, two, three, and four. And in one, I have a blade image. And concept two, I actually have a blade and a pole. And so in this way, I can be like, huh, well, which blade do I like? Do I like that one? Do I like that one? And kind of just go through this design ideation process. Each time I try out a new design, I create a new group and start painting. And then after I make a couple groups, then I start kind of comparing the combinations of these different designs. And so really great way, very fluid way of working. And here's the latest um, you know, object that I'm working on. And uh, this is for a weapon for Sven. And this is actually a highly layered up image. I kind of knew what I wanted. So I quickly roughed out the silhouette shape and just started painting on in the inside. And so you can see I went through a lot of different phases and trying to decide what do I want here? And ended up there. And so great way of being able to concept. And furthermore, if you actually wanted to kind of like come over into the topology tab underneath settings, you could change the background to same as active. And well, I guess I will make um, active meshes, advanced GL and uh, items mesh. And so now I have a new mesh layer and here in the topology tab, if I actually want to use a topology pen for you know roughing out the geometry, this is really for the next video, but it's just so freaking cool. I can use the topology pen to draw out my geometry hole now the control key with the topology pen and actually have it constrained to the plane and start building the geometry for my sword right away directly on top of my object. But that's for the next video. So as you can see, Moto's painting tools can be leveraged in really tremendous ways as far as concepting in a 3D application, but in a 2D manner.